Hi, and welcome to this tutorial in which I'm going to look at mid-side stereo, sometimes referred to as sum and difference, or occasionally lateral and vertical in reference to cutting vinyl discs. Whichever name you use, it's a fundamental and incredibly useful technique, both for recording and for processing stereo signals. Here we see an instance of Pro-Q set to the default stereo mode. Clicking the graph creates a stereo EQ band, affecting left and right channels equally. But I can switch this band to process left or right channels only, if required. Let's set it back to stereo, and switch the stereo mode to mid-side on the bottom bar. And actually the sound doesn't change at all. With the band affecting both channels, it doesn't make any difference whether we're in MS mode or not. If I switch the band to just the M channel, however, I'm now processing just the middle of the stereo image, literally what you get if you downmix to mono. This makes it much easier to create mono-compatible mixes. If I click the volume knob on the bottom bar and grab the pan ring around it, I can pan over to just the mid-channel, which is exactly the same as pressing the mono button on your master channel. So what happens if I pan the other way instead? We're now hearing just the side channel, or in other words, the difference between left and right. This is what you lose when you press the mono button. And if you're listening in mono, perhaps via a phone or tablet speaker, you won't be able to hear this at all. And I suggest plugging in some headphones for the rest of the video. So even with no EQ bands running, I can use the pan ring as a basic stereo width controller. Setting it left of centre narrows the stereo image by reducing the proportion of side signal, while turning it to the right widens the stereo image by reducing the proportion of mid signal. By extension, if I cut or boost specific frequencies for the side channel, I can narrow or widen the stereo image for just that frequency band. And if I dial in a low cut filter, I can remove all stereo content below the cutoff and force the lowest frequencies to mono. It's common knowledge that human hearing is not sensitive to stereo information in this low region. And many playback systems run the subwoofers in mono. So it makes sense to remove this information at the mixing or mastering stage. It would be logical, therefore, to conclude that we're most sensitive to stereo information in the very highest frequencies. So let's dial in a boost right up at 20 kHz for just the side channel. And actually, the effect on the sense of stereo space is not that great. We hear much more of a difference if I slide the boost down into the mid-range. And the stereo widening effect gets more and more pronounced the lower I go. Until, quite suddenly really, we reach the lowest bass frequencies and can no longer hear it at all. A gentle, wide boost for the low-mid region of the side channel can therefore be a very effective way to increase the sense of space and depth in a mix. However, I think it's useful to understand what's really going on behind the scenes. So I'm going to go back to first principles and demonstrate the mid-side stereo microphone pair, originally invented back in the 1930s by Alan Blumlein, the founding father of modern stereo recording techniques. An MS mic array starts with a single mono microphone, in this case positioned above the head of the drummer, Aaron Bitchke, and pointing down at his snare drum. This is the mid mic of the array and would normally have a cardioid pattern. But actually, any pattern will work fine, from Omni right through to figure eight. To make this stereo, I then add a side mic. And this time the pattern is critical. The mic must have a figure eight pattern, so it's equally sensitive from the front and the rear, and rejects sound from the sides. A fundamental property of this type of mic is the rear pickup, which is equal and opposite to the front of the mic. Or in other words, has reversed phase. This mic is then positioned perpendicular to the main mic, with the sensitive front and rear lobes pointing out to the left and right respectively, and the side null angled to reject direct sound from the kit, as we can see here from a different session. 
although I used the same model mics in this case. The mid mic doesn't have to be the same as the side mic. So you can record stereo signals using this technique, even if you don't have a matched pair of microphones. You just need one mic with a figure eight pattern for the side channel. Unlike a conventional stereo pair, however, panning these mics left and right doesn't recreate the stereo image. Instead, we get a strange presentation with a louder, drier signal over to one side from the mid mic and a quieter, more ambient signal on the other from the side mic. We therefore need something called a mid-side matrix to decode the signals, which is actually much less complicated than it sounds. There's a quick and easy method to convert MS to stereo, which can be used in any digital or analog mixer. I'll pan the mid-channel back to the center so it feeds left and right channels equally, then pan the side channel hard left. And then I'll duplicate the side channel to create an identical copy, pan it hard right, and also invert the phase. I'm now adding the mid and side mics together to create the left channel. And by inverting the phase of the side mic before adding it to the mid mic, I am in effect subtracting the side mic from the mid mic to create the right channel. We now have a proper stereo image with the snare nicely centered. And if I select both copies of the side channel, I can adjust the stereo width of the kit by adjusting the level of the side mic. With this setup, we can see quite intuitively that we're adding equal and opposite amounts of side mic to both the left and right channels. So if I listen to this signal in mono, the side mic simply cancels out, leaving only the mid channel. Doubling up the side channel adds clutter to the arrangement, however, so I prefer to use just one side channel. Pan the mics left and right as if they were a conventional stereo pair. And insert a mid-side matrix plug on the stereo subgroup. Most DAWs will provide such a plugin, and internally it performs the same simple transformation we just set up manually. Adding the mid and side channels to create the left channel, and subtracting the side channel from the mid channel to create the right channel. Of course, you could also record the mid and side mics as an interleaved stereo file and simply add the MS matrix plug to the stereo channel. Okay, I have another stereo pair of mics on the kit. This time a spaced pair of Omnis positioned almost touching the far wall of the live room. These are already a conventional stereo pair so I don't need a mid-side matrix to listen to them instead. But I'm going to go ahead and add one anyway. We're now adding left and right channels together to create the sum of both channels. And we're also subtracting right from left to create the difference between the channels. Or in other words, we've converted our conventional stereo signal into mid-side stereo using the exact same MS matrix we used earlier to go the other way. Logically, therefore, if I add another MS matrix, it should convert back to conventional stereo again. And in fact, we can freely convert from one type of stereo to the other with no loss at all. So if I place a stereo pro Q in between two MS matrix plugs, I can EQ mid and side independently, even though I didn't use an MS pair of mics. But of course, we don't actually need the pair of MS matrix plugs. Switching Pro-Q to MS mode does exactly the same thing, with the added advantage that the bands are now correctly labelled M and S instead of L and R. So let's force the low bass frequencies to mono, as we did before, to help centre the bass drum. And notice that if we listen to this pair of mics in mono, they sound darker with a slight loss of high frequencies, as is quite common with a spaced pair of mics. I'll therefore brighten up the mono version with a mid-only high shelving boost. And then balance this out with a cut in the side channel so they don't sound too bright in stereo. And notice how much more centrally focused these room mics now sound compared to the original. While still adding a useful sense of space and depth to the rest of the drum kit mics. Once we start to think in terms of mid and side instead of left and right, a whole range of other options become available. We can compress mid and side channels independently with Pro-C. 
or expand them independently with Pro-G. Or saturate them independently with Saturn. Indeed, most of the FabFilter plugins provide MS stereo options. But that will all have to wait for future tutorials as I've run out of time in this one. Thanks for watching.